All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I guess I'm going to lead us off here. Um, so my name is Veronique Blanchard. I'm the town administrator, and I am beyond honored and thrilled to work with our public buildings committee, who we have here tonight, Ken Wimette, Walter Goodrich, Chris Herman, Peter Jeswold, Ron Sweet. Um, and they have just done an amazing job over the last, I don't know, year. Not even, it's just been about a year, I think, that we, February of 22. So it hasn't been that long um, that they've been working on this project. So um, I'm sure people have questions about how things, you know, how we decided the process and how things were going to go. So I'm just going to walk us through our little presentation. And feel free to interrupt with questions anytime, because that's really what we're here to do is to answer your questions. So basically the background of this was, you know, um, because the town decided to do the highway facility and that got built, um, all of a sudden we realized we had some spaces that were emptied out by the highway department moving into the new facility. So this area right here and also the offices on top of um, the town offices. And then it was like, well, okay, we need to have a discussion about what is the best use of this building then given that there's more space. So we got together and started talking, fire, police, ambulance. And um, at that point, then it was decided really that what the town needed was to have uh, a committee that worked on all public buildings, not just focusing on one, but to really look at all of our infrastructure in town and have a committee that would look at the best and highest use for all those buildings. So that's how this new committee was born. Um, and as it says here, it was started on February 7th and 22. Um, and, you know, I don't have to read the purpose for you. I'll have a presentation. But basically the idea, again, is just to have one committee that's really looking for the best and highest use for all of our infrastructure. So, so then it was, okay, we're all sitting down and talking about this building and trying to figure out what, what are the options for reusing it. Should we consider building above? Oh, I, sorry, I should back up and say that, as I'm sure you all are aware, the offices for fire, police, and ambulance are up one of the worst steep flights of stairs <laughs> in the town offices, really inaccessible by the public. So it was thought we really do need to have some space where each of these departments can have their own office um, that's accessible. So the question was, do we want to do it on top of the building? Do, do we want to carve out some space in this building? I mean, everything was up for grabs when we first started discussing it. Um, and as you can tell, some of the options were rejected for certain reasons. For instance, if we were to build above this building, well, then we'd have to have an elevator or a lift of some kind to get people up there and make it accessible. And that just seemed like an excessive expense. So, um, and plus then, if we modified this building, this entire building would have to come up to code, which was, again, a huge expense that we thought wasn't really in the cards. Um, anyway, and anybody from the committee interrupt if I'm missing something <laughs> at this point? All right, so, um, let's see. So basically, we decided that the best option would be to add on a little building that was connected to this one that would house the offices and that the way this building would be split up is the first three bays would be for the fire trucks and then this one right here would be for the ambulance and this one would be for the police so that everybody would have room for all their equipment because I know that our chief has been very um, uh, kind in storing <laughs> a lot of equipment for the town and it needs to have a nice permanent cover. Um, so, given that, there was a lot of things that we had to work on with this building. I'm not sure if everybody is aware, but um, the water, we have very, very good neighbors, and the water for this building was supplied by OESCO, um, basically a handshake deal 50 years ago, and it was piped underneath the road, and it was starting to leak. So, we thought it was incumbent upon the town to really take responsibility for the own work. So we, de we dealt with um, drilling the well, which has already been done and piped in. Um, and that was uh, $15,000 worth of ARPA money that was used. 
Then, um, so the next thing we did was actually to have a structural integrity review of this building just to make sure that if anything happened to it, that it was worth doing something to, that it was really still a solid structure. And actually, I just got tonight from the, um, the, P the engineer the letter that says yes, with his seal and everything on it, says this building is fine and structurally sound. Then, of course, we had to deal with the leach field issue. Um, because that's another thing that was shared with the auxiliary building. Again, it's felt that the town really needs to take responsibility. I won't say for its own, you know what, but frankly, we thought it was pretty, really, yeah. Just so you know, that's not the auxiliary building. It belongs to the Conway Firemen's Relief Association. Oh, sorry, yes, I know it does, but I didn't know, I thought that's what you all called it. So what should I call it, I'm sorry. The Firemen's Relief Association building. Building, okay, all right, I will change that on there, thank you. Um, anyway, so we realized that we were going to really need to put in our own leach field. So you'll see that in the plans as well for a new septic and leach field. Uh, all right, so then we also had a survey done of the property um, with the overlay. We have some of these up on the table and you have them in your, in your handouts of the, the whole property with the proposed building addition. And um, they have marked out outside, they can go out afterwards, and you can see where the building outline actually is, and I believe you also did the leach field. Out, out to, yeah, the yeah. distance out to where the leach field, where the parking lot will start. Will start, okay, all right, perfect. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so, and we already took care of going to the ConCon, um, did our notice of intent, we've gotten our order of conditions, so we're all set with that. So then the next thing to do was to get the design and engineering for this new addition, um, which we just got some of the, the preliminary plans. I'd say preliminary, right? Because we're probably gonna do a little bit of modification to them. Um, but they're in your handouts and you can certainly see them up here. Um, and so ARPA funds were used again for that, which is, I gotta say, it's really nice that we have that source of money to be able to do these kinds of projects. And we, so we should be getting our actual cost estimates shortly. We had a rough estimate, which is what we've been going by in the projections and trying to determine how much money we might need to find. Um, so there, you all can see the layout, and when we go outside, you know, you can see. But so on the left, all the green is obviously gonna be green spaces, and there's the parking lot, um, the septic area, the new building, and the existing building. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to, maybe Peter, if you want to give kind of a rough out of the layout of sure. where we're, yeah. where we are and where that. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Danny yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the uh, building is 32 by 48. We've maxed out the amount of space that we can squeeze it in between the septic, the river, the road, um, and all the, all the constraints. The idea is to have to walk in the front entrance this way. Uh, have a and this will be modified somewhat. Um, we have a conference a meeting center here, um, and then an office uh, a office for the police chief. We're going to probably reconfigure this to make an office for the police officers. There'll be either one or two bathrooms. That's still up in the air. Uh, an office for the fire chief and an office for the first responders, and then. Uh, there will be a shower here in one of the bathrooms or a separate shower access to the fire the fire engines here the ambulance here and the police chief's car here and then this area is cordoned off for uh, utilities and washing and drying just maybe point to you are here where we are right now we are <laughs> we are here which you in, in that you are in the police chief's car does that make sense? Can everybody follow? Okay, okay. All right. And that's just a view of the profile. Now, I don't know if you guys wanted to talk about the roof line at all. I asked Heidi about that. What do you think, Heidi? I think you should make a match between this and the building. I think it's the first thing you see is you drive up 116, and I think what it looks like it does right now on that plan is going to jump out at you one more. So, this is an unequal pitch here, and the no, idea. Would be to extend that and make that unequal pitch the same. Yeah. 
It looks like a short time. You'll stand on the short time, it really does. It's such a large mass of yep. the building itself anyways, and then to attach this other large mass to it, but that's slightly different, it's in the It actually makes sense to match it for a lot of reasons. Uh, a lot of reasons other than the second screen, yes. Yes, uh, water coming off on the front side. More room to go on the back side. <laughs> so, Peter, you had said that you, you've maxed out the space that you have to use. So, as far as the roof line, can you bring that forward more to match the building or not? Um, I think I think the, the way it is on the um, on the the, 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 uh, highway, the the highway comes juts in. What, we're almost no. on the pro, on the on the we're on, we're on the, the highway is right there to the front of the building. Okay. The, um, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. So you couldn't actually match the front of the building. You could, but they with the telephone pole and everything there, they still want access across uh, the front of the building for the yeah. trucks. Because the fuel tank is probably going to go on the end of the building. So that they could fuel the trucks, right? And we 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 inserted a foot off the back just to. This initially we were we, we endangered species habitat skirts are actually through the back corner of this building. It, it, any species that's out in this parking lot is endangered for sure. But um, <laughs> we decided to inset it to give the concom a little fact that we're trying to stay away from the endangered species habitat. Can I ask another question? Or do you say it to the end? Or no, 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 no. So you had, you had mentioned, uh, like, second story obviously is not feasible for, for people, but there's always been such a storage issue. Is is it feasible that, that we try to match the roof line more and go higher, and even if you don't get the whole width, that you would have even half height storage up there for documents or fire, you know, for whatever. I just, it's, it's like what it happens you, is it puts the building codes because it mm. becomes a place where it's um, becomes very expensive because access um, and also low, low on, height on for the second floor. So even as storage there's no exceptions for that. Mm. We ran into that with the highway garage, that little storage. Yeah that's a good point. What if you do it and just leave it up there? Then you just don't finish it right now. Then you have the capacity to change it later. How do you access it though? Right now, if you're not using it right now, let's go. Well, even there. after. <clears throat> well, then you have to figure out where you're going to put like a pull down stair or a staircase to it. No matter what, you need to store, you need a way to get up there. No matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah, either way, you have you to access it. Oh, I understand that part. Well, yeah. and, and, the staircase. and Walter mentioned yeah. also, you know, I don't know what the structure is up here, but if you're attaching and you had a way to get up here and you're doing something in these two bays, is that feasible, unusable, unused storage space up there now, too? Um, this is just feeling all of What's that? The reason we put that roof on is because we were going to insulate the building. Right, it's, it's, it's on top of the old building. But then the snow load is going to go up, and this building, I believe, structurally wouldn't hold the snow load. I believe it's insulated on top. On top of the asphalt. It's not here, it's on top. And then we build yeah. the 20 shape. The engineer did say we could take the old one out. I mean, I think it's certainly something we could look at, you know, and, and see if it makes sense. Talk to our, our designer, and structural engineer, and the, and the building inspector and, and see. I mean, we couldn't figure, you, you, it would be hard in the addition to, to, get, a, to get access except for the pull down stair unit because the stairs take up an incredible amount of space. Right. Um, but there could be a pull down stair out here, perhaps. I mean, we can look at it for sure. It, it just, again, we're yeah, yeah. short on storage and Absolutely. only do it once and there's a way to do it. Yeah, I agree, I really like that idea. I haven't thought of that, but we, we definitely are short on storage. If you're going to put in stairs, I think you want to be near the center of the peak. You know, I don't, out there, it won't be much heavy. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, so where's the money coming from? <laughs> 
So this is actually the fun part for me. Um, because, because the Highway Facility Committee did such an amazing job and saved the town so much money, there is $450,000 left that has not been spent on that highway facility, which to me is just incredible. So um, on this year's warrant is, is an article requesting $311,000 um, to go to the construction of this new public safety building addition on top of which there's another article asking to use all of the monies from the sale of public lands which we can use on on buildings <clears throat> so putting that together with the roughly three hundred ninety thousand dollars we have left in arco which the select board has already um, expressed their desire to obligate the rest of it to this public safety building addition means we're just shy of eight hundred thousand dollars so the thought is it's very, very unlikely the town would have to even borrow any money or find money from anywhere else to complete this project, which I just think is really amazing. <laughs> so, any questions about money? What are your preliminary estimates coming in? I'm sorry? What are your preliminary estimates on the building coming in? We haven't gotten the preliminary yet. It was This was just basic, a rough estimate based on the number of square feet, right? Is that, mm -hmm. that's that, yeah, an amount per square foot, so. Did that include any work on this existing building here now? Like yes, 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 yeah. Um, but that, I, I, you know, we're looking into having the tech school again, do some of the work, like before, so. Can you, can you talk about that a little? That was one of my questions, is if you're, again, you're only going to do this once, and it's a lot easier to do it all, to do it at the same time. Are you, are you doing anything to improve the fire side of the building? Um, you know, whatever it might be, floor structure. All, Greg, all the floors roof. are all the floors are coming out. The entire building, the whole building, yeah. whole building, the floors are coming out, regraded, uh, insulated, radiant floors. Okay, I'll lay over. All right. Right. Yeah. But what about what about simple things like the the peak on the other side and the siding up top and the roof? And the These structure. are gable ends. Yeah. We're, at, we're looking at the roof. Um, that's not figured in right now. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the numbers come in. Yeah. Okay, so basically just wrapping up what the Public Buildings Committee is working on. The first goal is to create these new public safety building offices. Then, and I think this answers some of your questions, then renovate this existing building by pouring the new concrete floors with radiant heat, adding the hallway and storage area at the back of these two bays um, closest to the offices. And then we're also looking at repairing the roof and potentially putting solar panels on. That's not a given, it's just something we'll, we're looking into. <laughs> so what's our long range plan? Well, after this gets done, <laughs> Then the thought is it would be nice to retrofit the town hall finally to get a lift put in there um, so that we can, because now that everybody's moved out of the upstairs of town offices, we could move the rest of us out of the bottom of town offices over the town hall, and then the town could decide what they're going to do with the town office building. So, that's the long range plan, and I believe the next one is just questions. I wondered if people wanted us to back up to the slide that showed the uh, the uh, site plan. I was curious where the septic leach field was going. Yeah, that, 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 that. let's go back and we can look at that. And then we, then we can go outside and, and look outside. So, so this is the existing building that we're in now. That's the proposed addition. You have to have a 10-foot setback. This is, this is where the uh, diesel tank is is now it'll be moved to here. This is a 10-foot setback from the building to the beginning of the septic system, a 12-foot wide septic tank leach field area. This is parking, and even though it looks huge, I think we only got a dozen spaces or, or something like that for, I think. Depends on how you lay it up. Yeah. Um, and then here's the well here, the existing well, and we're gonna put the propane tank over there, is that right? And then run the propane into there. And then all this is, is green space planted, um, which one of the reasons we, we were well received by the Conservation Commission is because we're actually improving a previously degraded site by 
by create, you know, by pulling things away from the river and then planting that green buffer, buffer zone in between. So, um, yeah, how much of this is conceptual versus um, approved from a regulation standpoint? Like, I mean, you can put a parking lot right next to the well, and um, everything's been approved by the yeah. conservation. Truly, the only and the board of health. The only thing yeah. conceptual. And having the leach field in the, in the middle doesn't create a problem with fueling in the trucks or anything like that. The trucks are probably going to fuel from the front side. No. The iron is not figured in to finish up the water leaving problem on the other end of the building. <coughs> Time. Oh, it's, should, it's part of the project, basically. Absolutely. To see where it is. Hmm. Well, if, it, if, it, if it goes beyond the property? Right. No. No, I agree. From a, from a fire standpoint, you know, we spent a lot of money modifying or getting special trucks that would fit in the garage. Mm -hmm. Is that always going to be an issue? Or? It will always be an issue for height. Because of the doors are pretty much the maximum you can go height on. Okay. You'll have to keep shrinking the height of the truck down. But you'll, because there's only going to be one full size truck in each bay now, your length is no longer going to become a problem. Oh, that's good. We had to take five and a half feet off the last two trucks. Right. right. And they fit in the garage for the other truck. Most of the expense came from the length. Yeah, the length, yep. Right, so, right. And, it, and then that, crit that criticizes all your storage space on the truck, too. Right. So. That's good. Are you planning a similar building when it comes to down the hall? Down the um, river A similar building? A similar, I mean. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, all of this, the process is all, you know, public meetings input. Um, and I will say this, that the committee is doing one project at a time. So we showed you what the long range plan is, but the real plan is to get this one done. And then we can start talking about the next project. It's, it's a lot to take on. Well, the next one is <laughs> What's the timeline? Exactly. I don't know. What do you think the timeline is? Do we have a, an estimated timeline, Chief? Do you know? What's that? We, an estimated timeline for to at least a couple of years on this project. I would say it's probably realistically a probably two year project. Part of it is we use the tech school. If we use the tech school, it saves us a lot of money, but okay. costs us a little time. They are very interested in doing another project with us. It worked out very well the last time. Um, so I suppose on the mechanical side, the electrical side is on board. I spoke with the vocational director. She was checking with the carpentry side, but she didn't have high hopes for them. They got already got projects, they're trying to do a house, and they've got other small projects, so. That was probably questionable, so we'll have to use a general contractor for that side of it, probably. Do programming do similar? They do, but they're, they again, again, they're pretty well okay. booked up. Um, but if we can get the electrical and the mechanicals, it's a, that's a big savings. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, it's a, I, mean, I think it's a great plan, and uh, you guys are probably thinking, I wish we did this 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years, 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's well overdue, for sure. Well, I think the issue was that when we built a new school in 1990, we were heavily in debt. Oh, no, Joe, you got to go back two decades. Well, I, I wasn't here then. <laughs> we, we, we had a chance to build a highway garage back in the 70s. Yeah. No, I, when, I came on, when I came on the board, they were talking about it. We were looking at going along across the street. Yeah. Then we were going to convert the sheep farm. Falls one on the shed and falls. Back to seven. Yeah. How much of the uh, of the layout, the design of the building, is been looked at from a code perspective? Virtually all of it. I met with Jim Hawkins and uh, the plumbing inspector in their office with the plans. 
conceptual plans for the layout of the interior, but we had the, the uh, main footprint and everything else, and it was good with it all. Oh, that's great. I, I ran into an issue where if you had two bathrooms, they both had uh, showers and ridiculous stuff no. like that. No, 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 that's great. great. I've actually got a call into the plumbing inspector to get a clarification. The whole bathroom issue has been a moving target for the past five years. Right. Um, and with the whole gender neutral bathrooms, you, know, you go back to one toilet, one sink, a locking door, and it's a unisex bathroom. Right. And then it comes down to occupancy. How many people? Well, this is basically an office with three offices. So I really don't know if he's going to make us require two bathrooms because we're no longer dealing with the male female issue. So we may be only one bathroom. Is that Oh, we could always save this one. <laughs> you can keep that one. Can I make a vote on that? Negative? <laughs> yeah, the original plan that we, we gave to the designer had the had one bathroom within a large shower area, and it came back. And also, our engineer will be looking at code, code, code yeah, requirements. Honestly, when I met with them with that preliminary plan, they had one bathroom and they could see no issues. So, ultimately, it comes back on the inspector, not on the designer. So Peter, you had said you need like the 10 foot setback to the septic there. Um, and then you have the fuel tank within that setback. Is there it's a building? Take that over to Ron. Say Ron. that again? It's, the building is a 10 foot setback. Mm -hmm. Any foundation. And the, the designer actually says you might be able to get a 5 foot separation. Because so you, there's no basement. Yeah. So you might actually be able to get 5 more feet of usable space in there. The way everything's working out, it, it, it appears that it would, the way it's set up now is probably the most feasible. Because then that would put the um, distance between the building and the leach field at five feet. And then the septic tank, I mean, the fuel tank would actually be on, or just about on the leach field. Not that there, there's no issue with the fuel tank because it's a double wall. Yeah, I was just thinking, how can you possibly get more square footage because you, you know, you've, you've done a good job of squeezing everything into that space. And you know whether it's well, we discussed all for 50 years, years from now, and you know you're going to need something different space-wise. The other right. thing is when we went to the conservation was we were thought about doing the five foot asking for it, and we thought maybe that that would hinder in the. Um, Order of conditions that they right. Yeah, it would be nice to have more space, for sure. So the septic's the limiting factor there. It has to be 100 feet from the well. Right. Therefore, well, the parking is larger than it needs to be. Everything the building can't get bigger because the septic can't move. Everything is kind of shoehorned in because of the river and the well. I don't know how you did it, but. <laughs> And as I guess Veronique had said, we looked at looked at taking some space from here too for offices and, and stuff, but then you compromise the fire, length of the fire trucks, the length of the ambulance and, and everything else. It was kind of and stuck. I don't no, think it's on that blue. Picture. What's that blue line in the back of the building? Siltation barrier. Okay. Well, we've got a, we've got a tight tank to go in the back of the building because by code we have to have floor drains. Commercial buildings are all have to wrap. So we'll have floor drains. Those will go in the tight tank and all the separation. So, so there's a lot of water separated yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll be, that'll be in there. So. And that'll, but that can fit right on the river, right where the existing septic tank is now. Actually, I think we talked about turning that into the tight tank and just putting a gas um, separate oil separator tank. In. So, how does that work? Like, uh, oil water separators a lot of times then connect into a sewer system. Right. 
But if you put well, it in the tank, you don't have to, you know, you're not going So you have to pump it out. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But really, realistically, I don't know how many years it would take to fill it because it's a floor drain. How, how much water is going to be on the floor other than from melting? Right. And if you've got a radiant floor, most of that evaporates. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So it could be years before you had to pump that out. And these trucks aren't up routinely in a snowstorm like a highway truck is. In fact, I know these guys from the, over the years, they don't like to pull their trucks out if it's raining. Because <laughs> then they got to wipe them down. Right. Good. Oh, you get the holes wet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you talk, uh, we've mentioned it before, but in detail, like what would you do to the, the rest of the building while you're doing this? You talked about the floors coming out. Yep. So is, there, is there anything else you need to do to, I don't know, partition or fix it up? Or they actually, the fire department, I don't want to speak for them, but Chris was talking about removing a, actually a partition. There's a block wall over there that separates the two fire bays. Mm -hmm. Remove that, add posts so that you have three completely open bays so doors aren't hitting a block wall and they're open and things like that. Great. Um, obviously dividers between the police and the ambulance. Um, and, and whatever there needs to be for clean material storage behind the ambulance and the fire side. And that's still up in the air to what fire department needs, but when you get into the cancer awareness, not storing your gear where there's a running diesel motor, you know, a truck. Right, right, right. So a cleaner, a room that's kept clean from that. So. Now what about uh, things to work out? Insulation, now that you can have radiant heat and the whole thing. Is the walls get insulated? Do the doors need to be replaced? How does that? How old are these doors? Do you know, Ryan? They're about they're insulated 30 doors. Years they're old. currently insulated doors. They, when we put new doors in the highway, they said the guy that put them in down there put these doors in originally. And he said you need, the doors today don't meet what these. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Comforting, isn't it? <laughs> But are you going to insulate the cinder block walls or anything? Or are you just going to rely on the cinder to keep the heat in? Not on the original. Not. It really isn't a um, huge expense. This is the heat this is just building the way it is. Yeah, I know this will. But so I'm talking about got, those. You've got two walls. Yeah. Yeah. The majority of your heat And you said this is already lost. insulated here? The majority of your heat is always lost. Though. Probably wouldn't hurt to put one up there. Yeah. I mean, I think Never there's hurts. nine years <laughs> That's the beauty of having radiant heat, though. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of having radiant heat. Right. No, no, nice. You don't lose the heat no. out. No. Plus, when they open it with the radiant heat, when they open the door, take the truck out, it's not actually going to cool the building down. No, not like it does now. Right. It right. has to reheat the whole space. If the reason the building won't have a basement, financial or environmental? Why it doesn't? It's support for the trucks. So to do a floor that would support the trucks <coughs> would be uh, very expensive. Um, is that the same the addition? Just an addition? Of the addition? Oh, the addition? The f All right. No basement in the addition? There's no real need. Well, I suppose you could do it as well. We never gave that a thought. I don't think we ever did. Well, one thing would what would happen is we'd have to have more distance between yes, the right. the septic system and the building. If it's a basement, the I don't know what the twenty feet. feet. We lose ten feet. We lose ten feet. Could you have half a basement? Any kind of basement. Oh, any kind of basement. And then what happens is then you have to access the basement. So that means a set of stairs. And that means you, your space is going to a set of stairs rather than office space or something like that. So we just felt that given those things. That the, they just another, another thing on this, this area out here, if you were going to dig it up and make a cellar, you might be opening a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Too well, shame. You wouldn't be digging the whole thing because you'd be undermining this building. You can't dig an eight foot wall against you a wall. You would have to be back. Yeah, I think mean, exactly about, probably closer to 10. Yeah, you lose about 10 feet of that basement. Just for structural Especially things. this is sandy. So you'd be better off, honestly, you'd be more cost effective to go up with the attic thing that you're talking about. 
Yeah, I hope you look at the attic thing, even if it's yeah, yeah. not done initially. That you know, there's always stuff to store that can sit there for ten years. But at least if you have, you like you said, a pull down stairs after the fact that could get up there. So. Yeah. And I hope that the roof and everything's looked at, so it's kind of a a once and done. Not a three years from now we need to put a roof on this or something. I think the roof is being looked at. You don't. Like I, I know what you're saying. Have you considered the floor? Yeah. No, 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 that was part of the presentation that, that we were going to have the roof fixed and that we're going to consider solar, but it wasn't really quite, you know, we're talking about it. There might be other places in town where it would make more sense for us to put some solar on the roof, so we kind of want to look at the whole. You know. That's why it's nice to have this public buildings committee because they look at everything and not just the one project. So. Engineer the roof now for solar. Well, I'm pretty sure this that we one. was told that it, this, this was one for us. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually, because of the because of the ridge line, it was actually a pretty nice roof for solar. This one. Yeah. yeah. Except okay. for what's on the other side of the river. Right. <laughs> Except for the, the green things. Ken, <laughs> <laughs> no. where's your holding cell for all the Conway to Jim? It's Elm Street. <laughs> Elm Street and Greenfield. <laughs> Compactor thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. They never complain after you push the button. <laughs> Still referred to as the Elm Street Motel. There you go. This is being recorded, you know. <laughs> I did ask you about your editing skills. <laughs> <laughs>